he walked before God in perfection. Now we're not, a lot of times that means maturity. Walk before God and be mature. We can't stay baby Christians all our life. Amen. Paul said some of you desire the sincere milk of the word of God to grow thereby. That's good to grow by the word of God. But God wants us in our Christian lives to, to be mature and in the things of God. Amen. Praise God. Genesis 17, verse 1. Now, God, we, we, we sung the song, He's a way maker and we're a worker. And, and uh, you know, He didn't just do those things in the Old Testament. He did, he's doing them today. Amen. Glory to God. We got the, a lady sitting here that was healed of a uh, four-stage old barren cancer mm -hmm. with us, praise God. God is still uh, a healer, praise God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We got, I believe that with all my heart. And the Bible says, if any two people shall agree upon anything as touching this earth, it shall be done. If I'm in agreement with her, she's in agreement with me. If I'm in agreement with you, you're in agreement with me and in agreement with this word, praise God, it's going to be done, the Bible says. Amen. Hallelujah. Ain't no maybe's about it. Come on. Now, this is a... <clears throat> And when Abram, God had not changed Abraham, Abram's, Abraham's name yet. And when Abram was 90 years old, and nine, 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said to him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Now I got to looking at that this week. And you know, I'm, a, I'm sort of a pastor teacher. And what I, what I did, I know that the, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. There was 14 monks translating the, the, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was originally written in Greek. So, and, and I preach out of the King James Version, if, you know, if that's how I have, you know. But there's other Bibles, but I just, I love that King James Version. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So I got to look at, at that word. He said, look what he said. He said, I am the almighty God and walk before me. Be perfect. God wants us to be sound. He wants us to have a sound mind. He wants us to have a sound body. He wants all of our needs to be uh, met according to Philippians 4, uh, uh, 19. Walk before God in perfection. Now we're not... A lot of times that means maturity. Walk before God and be mature. We can't stay baby Christians all of our life. Amen. Paul said some of you desire the sincere milk of the word of God to grow thereby. That's good to grow by the word of God. But God wants us in our Christian lives to, to be mature and in the things of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So he says, I am the Almighty God. I looked the word Almighty up, and, uh, and I just went out and got me a, 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 a strong concordance, a Hebrew and Greek concordance, so I could study. The Bible says in Timothy, it says, study to show yourself approved, a workman that can rightly divide the word. So I looked that word Almighty God up, and it means El Shaddai. That's the name of God. That's what it means. And the name of uh, Almighty El Shaddai means the all-sufficient one. How many of you believe that God's all-sufficient for us? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I mean, now I'm getting a little bit happy here, praise God, when I lift Jesus up. <laughs> and it also means the all, 
uh, it means the uh, God who's more than enough. When God answers your prayers, that's not all is God. Somebody say amen. He's got plenty more where that come from. Hallelujah. So El Shaddai is what I'm talking about today. The Almighty God, the all-sufficient God, Almighty God and El Shaddai. E-L-S-H-A-D-D-A-I. You know, I've got a message that I preach sometimes on the seven redemptive names of God. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah Rapha, praise God. He's, he's every one of those things. Now, I'm not talking about preaching the denomination or something from uh, this and or that. And I'm talking about staying with the Word of God. So, in Genesis 15, 13, let's go there now. Look at that. I, I use a lot of scriptures here. I think Diane found that out last week because I'm not just one of these preachers to take one scripture and then let's preach on it. Let me tell you something. I can make a doctrine out of one scripture if I want to. That's why I like to bring line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, to connect it together, praise God. And that's why, visitors, we put the Word of God up on the, on the wall so you can read it and you can't go out of here and say, now, Pastor Max's opinion because I don't have an opinion. <laughs> It's, with, it's what God said, amen? Yeah. And whatever he says, it's true. And guess what? I believe it, don't you? Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> and he said unto Abram, Know of a surety, thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Now he's talking to Abraham. He said, pretty soon the Israelites is going to be in bondage to Egypt. Pharaoh. He says, and, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve, I will judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Let me tell you something. God told Abraham, and it, it come to pass 430 years later. I don't care. I don't get just because, let me tell you something. If everybody died today of some dreaded disease, that does not alter the word of the living God. It's still true. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. So it comes to pass. Now watch this. Let's read this. Let me, let me write this out. Uh, Abraham, God made a covenant with him, and he said, your people's going uh, to be in bondage for 400 years. And then after that, you're going to come out with great substance. I'm going to show you something here right now in just a minute. So, what happened there was this was when Moses, how many of you know Moses killed a, a, somebody and had to go uh, way out in the desert? Had to spend a lot of time, 40 years in the desert. You know, God had to make him over. And God told him he called him. But sometimes when people are called, they done good all of a sudden, and all of a sudden they way out there in the wilderness, amen. So Moses had to do that, but God told him, said, I want you to go lead my people out of Egypt. And that's what he was doing. And so what we're seeing here is that when Moses started leading those people out, and there was three million people, the Bible says, that Moses led out, and Moses led them to the Red Sea. Now, you can imagine what those people thought. Well, he's led us right here, and here we're going to die. <laughs> God didn't say they was going to die. He said they're going to come out with substance. Right. Amen? So we got the Red Sea in front of us, the, the, the Israelites, and now we've got mountains on this side, and we've got uh, 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 valleys on this side, and we've got Pharaoh's army coming up behind them. And God told Moses, God spoke to Moses and said, stretch out your hand. Or some people said, stretch out that staff. Just, just stretch it out. And when he did that, the Bible says there, uh, over there in Exodus, that, uh, well, well, let me just go over. I don't want you to think I'm Exodus four, uh, 14, and we'll start we'll, we'll there just a minute. But he says, stretch out thy hand. And guess what happened? The Bible says the sea congealed. The word congealed means to be froze. It was just like, I mean, can you imagine that? 
those seas, the sea rolled back and it stood up a wall like frozen water. Now, I want you to know something. It took a lot of faith to even walk through that uh, uh, sea on dry land. When you're, if you look at them walls, they might come back any time. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Huh? So you got to keep your eyes on Jesus. The Bible says in Isaiah, it says, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, you will have perfect peace. Glory to God. I'm all about having some peace, don't you? Amen. Praise God. God wants us to have peace. Hallelujah. And then what happened? Pharaoh changed his mind. Pharaoh was coming up and he was closing in on to him. So, and the Bible says it took all night. The east winds blew and it took all night to let those waters go. And the, it, that the Israelites went through on dry land. And just as soon as the Israelites made it over there, God spoke to Moses again and he said, hold up your hand. And when he held up his hand, the seas came back. The water came back, and guess what? It destroyed all of Pharaoh's army, Pharaoh's chariots and horses. And I can't find if it destroyed Pharaoh or not. I don't know. He might have been one of these leaders that stood way back and said, uh, you all go do it, you know. I don't, I don't know that man, but I'm just, that's not my opinion, but I'm just saying that, okay? But it'd be good if, I, you know, I just can't find him. He might have just went back and started another army for 400 more years. But they started going, and all of a sudden, he spoke to Moses and stretched up your hand, Moses, and the sea came back, and guess what? It destroyed all the chariots, all the horses, and Pharaoh's army. And the Bible says, and, and there it says in, in Exodus uh, 15, it says that he, uh, they brought out the tambourines, they, them women brought them tambourines out, hallelujah. I never, I keep thinking, I think about Sister Rachel Patrick, Woodrow Patrick's mother from Decoy. When I first started, I started over at Elmrock and that little white church on the hill over on the right. And I remember her standing there playing that tambourine. You know, she had a little shuffle too, you know, with Sister Rachel. How many of you remember Sister Rachel Patrick over there? One, praise God. By the way, how have you been able to keep all your hair this time? <laughs> no more tangles. I believe I had something to wash my hair with years ago and you just done me. I Well, did you know that the powerful man of God, Elijah, was bald headed? Yeah, he was bald headed. Now, watch this. And the, there were some children there made fun of Elijah's bald head, and guess what happened? The bears come out of the wood and eat them up. Read that in 1 Kings. So I ain't had one congregation member make fun of my bald head ever since I preached that. <laughs> That's just a note, say it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So what happened? Now let me read this in Exodus 15. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still. Sometimes when we're going through a circumstance or going through a situation, we just got to stand still and let the peace of God flood our hearts. Because the Bible says in, in Matthew 6, worrying does not add one thing to what we're going through. Amen. I'll tell you this, visitors. I told her there's 365 fear knots in the Bible. There's 365 days in the year. That's no coincidence. God is saying fear not every day of the year. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Fear ye not and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. That word came to pass after 430 years. And he told them that morning, he said, the Egyptians you see today, praise God, I feel like right now in my heart, that whatever you're facing today, if you'll just stand still and let the peace of God come over you, you'll not see that no more in your lives, just like the Egyptians. Can I have an amen? Amen. I believe that with all my heart. I believe God's still the same yesterday, today, and forever, don't you? That's right. 
and the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore cry thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Verse uh, 6, verse 17, I will behold, uh, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his host, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. Did you know that God always gets honor in everything you do? I believe, I believe sometimes today in their, in their churches today that the... Uh, Lord, help me say this and not be, but I believe that men tries to get in the in the scene. Let me tell you something. I don't care if you can remember my name as long as when you leave here. But if you can remember one thing I said about Jesus, that's a good thing. Amen. Amen. I don't want no credit. I don't want no glory. Are you listening to me? That's right. You listen to me. All right. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I could say something out there, but I'm going to walk around. Hallelujah. Amen. So how many of you really want what you've been going through, what you come to? We used to sing a song, you won't leave here the same way you come in church. If you're having something in your life today, I don't care what it is. I don't care what's going on. Praise God, we don't have to go home the same way. Amen? Amen. Whatever that is bothering you, whatever uh, uh, torment you're going through, whatever thing that's, that's getting in your way of your life and not making it uh, uh, peaceful, well, then you can leave here free from that in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, I will. I'm talking about... What happened back there? El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough, showed up. You know, and it all, it hinges on obedience too. God told Moses to do what he wanted to do. But if Moses had said, well, I don't know where I need to do that or not. You better do what thus saith the Lord, God says. Amen. Because Mary, Jesus' mother, said, do whatever he says. Amen. And do whatever that Bible says because that's the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And if we do whatever that word says, obedience kicks in and praise God. It may not do it just instantly, but praise God, you stay with God. You stay with Almighty God. You stay with the all-sufficient one. You stay with El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough. And I will guarantee you that it will, you will have results. Amen. Woo, glory to God. Right there was a good place to say amen. <laughs> Sometimes, mistress, I... I I look at my congregation, I said, I'm a preacher a lot better than you, amen. <laughs> they know I'm kidding, though. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. Let's go to Joshua. You see, Joshua 10... And we look at verse 12. Now I want you to see in this scripture how mighty God is. And how mighty Jesus is. And how powerful the Holy Ghost is. There's, not, there's no use to be afraid of the Holy Spirit. I remember when I was growing up and, and I went to a, a church over in Eastern Kentucky, where I lived, it, it, they brought it to Knott County over there, right here in this county. And uh, they had it down there at uh, Sloan Town in a, in, in, a, in a little old garage. You remember that cold base garage that sat across from? Well, they had church in there, and, and uh, my grandmother lived right across the road there. So I went over there to check it out, and, and I was liking the music, you know. My, we had guitar music, you know, and this and that. I liked that. <laughs> And all of a sudden, they had a box sitting there, and they reached in there and brought out a big rattlesnake, and zoom! <laughs> I never returned to that church in one night, and never, never again. <laughs> I mean, you know, hallelujah. 
I don't know if you say I didn't have no faith. You say, well, I, 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 I really believe I had a little sense. <laughs> well, I never did go back to that. But what we're talking about here, and I have been in churches, and I have seen God, El Shaddai, move and do the exceedingly, Ephesians says, the exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ask or think according to the power that works in you. Where is the Holy Spirit if you're born again? It's in us. Woo! Glory to God. Since it leads us and guides us in all truth and shows us things to come. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So let's look at Joshua 12. Now this is something that's never been, never was done before, and it was never one done, never, never done again. And Joshua was fighting the Amorites. He was fighting a great battle there, and Joshua was, the, the Israelites was losing. Then spoke Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said, in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. What that means, that means, son, don't you go down. Moon, don't you come up. What God did, he stopped this whole universe, praise God, almighty God, he stopped this whole universe from time, time stood still, and he fought until he won that battle. That's almighty God. Can somebody say amen? amen. That's El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. That's the God who's more than enough. Amen. amen. Now, you busy. I get excited sometimes, so just, just let, me, let, me, let, me, let me alone. I'm just going to get excited. <laughs> I can't help but get excited when I think about it. God and the Word of God. Look at this. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. It, it, now watch this. It is not this written in the book of Jasper? That's one of the books that didn't make it into the, into the uh, Bible. Now watch this. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. Now let's go back right here. And he said, well let's, let's read this whole thing. This is important. Then spoke Joshua to the Lord in that day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites for the children of Israel. And he said, now watch this. Who said Watch this. That is not a capitalized H. If God had said, God told Joshua, because it says, and he said, Joshua said, in the sight of Israel, son, stand still. Upon Gideon and thou moon in the valley of, and he says until, and then he said, verse 14, and there was no day like that before it, nor after it that the Lord God hearkened unto the voice of man. Mm -hmm. They never had been a day before then, and I can't, I don't believe, I can't remember reading anywhere that, that there was a day after that that God stopped time. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yep. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't really like you. <laughs> Glory to God. Bring her back, please. <laughs> Glory to God. I like that. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> but he said that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of man for the Lord fought for Israel. And Joshua returned and all Israel with him unto the camp to Gilgal. Now listen, I'm talking about a God who's almighty. I'm talking about a God who is all-sufficient. I'm talking about a God who's got more than enough. Amen? Amen. Amen? God wants us to have our needs met. But you know, sometimes I, I believe with all my heart that God wants us to have more than, 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 than our needs met so we can give to somebody else. Amen. 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 I like you even more, I like you. <laughs> 
Yes. And that little girl's all right. So you see two times here that God Almighty moved. Now, just in First Kings, eight, uh, First Kings uh, eighteen, I won't read that, but you know the scripture there. That was when Elijah, Elijah, beat four hundred prophets of, of Baal. There. The prophets were trying to overtake. The devil was trying to overtake. I mean, I, I believe the devil's trying to overtake our nation, don't you? Pray, I'm on, we, we want to pray and just believe God that he's going to be all sufficient and, and uh, put them rats out. I didn't mean to say that. But I just get carried away sometimes. So this was when Elijah <clears throat> was there. And he was getting ready to, he built an altar. And he put water all around that altar. More than it's supposed to be. Keep pouring it on, he kept pouring it on. And he looked at the, at the <coughs> who was the king there, Ryan? Amen. He looked at Abraham. See, I'll tell you what, I've got friends in low places, ain't I? Or high places. He said to Ahab, he said to that king of Baal, he said, listen to me. The one, if the God who answers by fire is who we're going to serve. Well, <clears throat> Ahab and his kings, they, done it, they danced on the altar. They stepped on the altar. They done this and they cut themselves on the altar. You know that wasn't a God. <laughs> they cut themselves on, they done a lot of things there. And Elijah come in, said, you boys is... Just move over and sit down. So let me, I, I'm going to take care of this for you. Because God's going to answer by fire. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Lord. And he said, uh, I believe he prayed a 38 word prayer, is all he prayed. And all of a sudden, fire came down, lightning came down from heaven and lit that altar up, destroyed that altar up, and, and, and took everything around it and all the uh, sacrifices that Baal put on it. And he said now, and, and all, you know, all the people that was around said, we're going to serve the God of Elijah from now on because mm -hmm. he is God Almighty. Mm -hmm. How many of you know there's only one true God? Mm -hmm. And his name is Jesus Christ. His name is El Shaddai. His name is Jehovah Jireh. His name is the all-sufficient one. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Now, Let's go to the to the New Testament, Cherry, and, and, and we'll close with this scripture. <clears throat> My congregation's people here, there's some not here, but they getting they're getting happy that I'm getting older because I'm getting shorter in my messages. <laughs> Get this. When I first started a young preacher, I started at eleven o'clock and I preached seven or eight sermons in one. We'd be there at three. Be there at two o'clock or something. Like that. And, and finally, I, 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 I took it. You know, my wife kept telling me, said, you're going to quit that. I said, that's too long to hold them people. Well, it didn't, I didn't go to a church where they sung me down, but that'd been all right. Somebody would jump up and start singing. And I'd sit down, you know. It didn't matter to me, you know. But, but I just so young and so zealous that I wanted to get the God's word out. But, uh, uh, but I, I'm getting a little older now. And, so I try to keep everything pretty comfortable for everybody. Amen. Amen. Now, glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm not used to them, amen. <laughs> We're here over in the eighth chapter of John, where John was talking about. Let's look what it says. And he says, and uh, let's go right here, 855. And ye have not known him. Now he's talking to the to the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the Herodians, and all the people of the, of the synagogues of that day. And he said, "Ye have not known me, but I know him." And Jesus said, "I know him." Now they thought the church that they thought he was lying because what Jesus now says, "I know him." And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like you all. <laughs> That's red letter. That's what Jesus said. He said, 
If I said I don't know my father, I'd be a liar just like you folks are because you don't believe that I'm God. I'm Jesus. A lot of people don't believe Jesus come as the Son of God. But read, stay with me now. Stay with me. I'm going to prove this to the Lord of God. Your father, now watch this. Your father rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said, look this, truly, truly, verily, verily, this is important. I say unto you, before Abraham was I am. Who was it that Moses said that was to, to he said, What am I gonna say? So who am I gonna tell that, that for me to do this? How, how am I? He said, Tell them that I am that I am that sent you. What Jesus was trying to do, he said, Listen, I am before Abraham, I am that I am. He was the all Jesus is the Almighty God, He is the all sufficient one, He is the one who's more than enough. And praise God now. And you know, I've never seen that before in verse 55. I've never seen that that Jesus called them folks liars. But he was just trying to be truthful. And he said, Hey, if I told you, because Jesus said, He said, I didn't, I come not to not to do my will, but the will of the Father that sent me. He said, I say nothing that the Father don't tell me to say. I do nothing that the Father don't tell me to do. That's this, this, and he said right here, he says, he says, you don't believe that, but I know him and keep his sayings. We got to keep the Father's sayings. We got to keep the word of God within our spirits. How many of you know that mankind is three points? It's mind, psyche, flesh, and spirit, heart. David called it the hidden man of the heart. That's the real you. I see y'all sitting here, but I really don't see the real you. I, I can't see the inside of you. But that's the one who has changed. How many of you know when you, after you got saved, you still made a few messes? <laughs> but God forgives them. Amen? Amen? If we ask forgiveness, we're not perfect. But here's to the man <clears throat> named Jesus Christ that was the only perfect man that had ever lived. And he said, before Abraham, I am. Oh, Jesus is the Almighty God. Jesus is the Son of the living God. But at that time, when he come on this earth, he said, he said, I am the Son of Man. Amen? Amen. Come on right out, I love you, honey. Woo, give me five. Hey, yes. Please bring her back. <laughs> That little girl's getting with you today. Mm -hmm. We might be just a little bit, I don't consider myself, uh, but we might be a little bit, uh, have some Pentecostal blood in us maybe. I, you know, it's, uh, that's all right though, ain't it? Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, we don't have, uh, we're not Pentecostal. We're just people that love Jesus and obeys the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's who we are. That's who Jesus is. Wants to do everything for you. One last scripture, and I, I guess I lied to you. One more scripture, Hebrews 13, 8. <clears throat> and let's read this. I, I, people preach. I had stuff preached to me when I was first getting into the Word that things don't happen no more out of the Bible. They were just for the people of that day. Folks, what does that say, Hebrews 13? Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. If he done something then, he can do it today. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. You won't sit there on the front row, baby. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Now, I'm going to tell you what, that one girl, sit back here. Now, then, you got some conversation going on. I'll bet you're amen for you. I'm just kidding, man. I'm just having a little fun today. You know? She could say a good prayer. Praise God. Amen. I, amen. I love that. That's what the Bible says. Train your children up in the way that you go in the admonition of the Lord, and they'll not turn away from it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Did you get anything out of this today? Amen. God is good. His mercy endures forever. His grace is sufficient for us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. If there's anybody in here today that came with a circumstance or situation in their lives that's not good or you know, we want to pray for you. We want to, uh, we want to pray with you. That's what Christians do is pray and bear one another's burdens. So if that's you today, if you need prayer, if you need, you may not be where you need to be with God, but you know, God loves you. And we can just come back to the place where God wants us to be with him. Praise God. The Bible says, let us return to our first love. Praise God. Oh, Lord, I thank you for that. I praise you for that, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, Father God. You are worthy, worthy, worthy. If there's anybody in here has never confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, this is your day. You can do that right now. All you got to do is just say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. And I believe you rose again for me. And I receive you as my Savior. If you prayed that prayer, let us know before we leave this church. Praise God. Father God, if there's anybody that needs to be healed, delivered, or set free, the Bible says to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The Bible says anoint with all, James 5, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Praise God. We want to do that this morning. Glory to God. And Holy Spirit, just show up and tell us what we need to do. Show up and minister to these people's hearts, Lord. Lord, just, just minister to their hearts, the hidden man of the heart. Lord, minister to them in Jesus' name. I give you praise for that, Lord. I give you glory for it. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. I'm Pastor Max Long, Pastor of Faith Life Church here in Knott County, and I would like to invite you to church. We're 1.5 miles off of the four lane, Route 80. Turn on the junction at the 1098. Come out 1.5 miles, and we're on the left. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior. We believe he's the healer. We believe he's the liver. We believe he's the baptizer in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. If that, does, that, if that minister to you, come and be with us at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Just drive out on 1098 till you see the red and white sign, Faith Life Church. You can't miss us. We're looking for you, and we praise God that you're blessed in Jesus' name. Come and see us now. Amen and amen. We thank you for watching, and we would like to remind you that Faith Life Church has relocated to 3538 Possum Trot Road near Lebron, Kentucky. Also, we now have three ways that you can enjoy our videos each week. One, on our YouTube channel as usual. Two, on our new Rumble channel. And finally, three, directly on our official Facebook page. We thank you once again for watching. We hope God blesses you and that you have a wonderful week.